Well, welcome to Starkville. I mean, how has it been so far? How's the adjustment been? Yeah, uh, the adjustment has been great. Uh, obviously, you know, whenever you, you transition like this in January, uh, you know, it's really about prioritizing the immediate needs. Uh, so recruiting, we have, you know, some immediate needs, uh, but also building and develop your relationships with your players in a quick amount of time. The way that the portal works, you know, with some of your guys in there, you got to get, get your guys back out. Um, it's really been a whirlwind, to be honest with you. Um, you know, everybody likes to ask if we're getting settled in. Or, uh, absolutely not. It's just a uh, rotted and gutted, man, uh, a million miles an hour. Uh, but, you know, that's the way that, that we all like it, right? And jumping in the fire, and here we go, and uh, push all the gas and never slow down. Can you kind of give us some insight on the whole process of you kind of getting here? Because when, when Zach Garnett was fully hired and, you know, it was out there that he was searching for a new OC, that was like one of the hottest topics here. And obviously, you know, you ended up earning the job, but what was the process like, uh, the interview process and him being kind of a young guy, what made you want to commit to him in this program? You know, in the interview process and visiting uh, with Coach Arnett, I really felt like our, our vision, uh, our passion and our energy really aligned. And as you go through this, I think as a head coach and as a coordinator, right, you're always trying to kind of find that right fit. Uh, it was pretty evident uh, as soon as we started talking uh, I felt like we were the right fit and the right match for each other. You know, I, and I didn't know Coach Arnett. I've never worked with him, um, but I, I know his passion, right? His uh, the the way that he coaches, you know, his defensive unit, and now him becoming the head coach. That was something that I, I really wanted to align with. And, I, and ironically, I felt like I was kind of like the offensive version of, of Coach Arnett, and that you know I coach with the same energy, the same passion, um, and really, you know. Uh, dive into, you know, the compassion for my players and my kids. You mentioned, I got it there. When you look at the roster, I think forgot the time to look at the roster. What do you think of the offense? The playmakers were trying to I I was at it. Does that hit you? Yeah. Uh, you know, th as you go through and you look at the roster, you know, there's sometimes where you can go through and you can really watch a bunch of film and have, you know, a good idea of exactly what it is that you're inheriting. Um, you know, I, I do think that, in our on our offensive unit, uh, we've got enough explosive playmakers, uh, you know, to distribute the ball right around from running backs to uh, receivers, you know, to uh, uh, hopefully some tight ends here, uh, you know. But really, you know, everybody likes to ask about the the system and well, you're going from air raid to now pro style, and really, it's more about identifying who your true playmakers are, right, and finding out what the best ways are to get them the football. You know, whether that be running it 40 times a game or that be throwing it six times a game. You no, know, so there's still a discovery phase in, right, exactly how we need to utilize our playmakers' strengths within this off. When you looked at Will Rogers, I mean, did he kind of play a factor in anything in coming here? What do you think of him and, and what do you think he could bring to the offense that you want to run? Because it, it yep. looks like on paper before he ran up, say it's going to be different than what he's used to. Yeah. No, it, it will be different. Uh, obviously, uh, whenever you are, are going through the interview process and you're talking about different opportunities, absolutely. Is it great whenever you've got an experienced quarterback that's, you know, uh, won a lot of games and, and done some great things within a program? So, uh, you know, I, I'd be lying if I said I wasn't excited to be able to have the opportunity to coach Will Rogers, you know, from an outsider looking in. Uh, you know, and the same thing talking about explosive play Lakers, you know, I really – Part of, of this offense is identifying the things that Will Rogers is going to be able to do well and play to his strengths, right, and limit his weaknesses. When you look at this roster, what do you think adding the pathetic positions of a roster can do for the offense? Obviously, the pressure and the pressure and the pressure. Yeah, then, so when you add a tight end, right, now you're talking about multiple personnel groups, right, multiple formations. You know, uh, a bunch of shifts and motions and where it's not just at a stationary two by two or three by one. So, right. Uh, it gives you the versatility to utilize, you know, playmakers in different ways and um, incorporate the tight ends, not only in the run game, but in the pass game. And, you know, just adding another, you know, playmaker with a different skill set than maybe an explosive, you know, two or whatever. Are you expecting a big learning curve? I mean, you know, App State, you guys had a lot of success on offense, but now, I mean, SEC, ready to win best conference in football. I know you had an SEC win last year, but what kind of learning curve are you expecting, uh, you know, approaching this conference? 
You know, uh, we, we'll start off uh, and make sure that it's slow and thorough and complete uh, in our teaching process because it will be different, right? Just from a fundamental tech and, and technique standpoint uh, with our guys. Uh, but to be honest with you, the learning curve, I don't think is gonna be that drastic. Uh, in this day and age, right, uh, kids will do, right, however you ask them to do it, however you demand that they operate and they function, uh, they're gonna do it then. So, you know, there'll be uh, uh, a lot of new learning, right, but I'm confident that our guys are gonna be able to pick it up, right, and uh, for a short amount of time. And, and I say that because now we've done this a couple of different takeovers and transitioned offenses this way, you know, uh, multiple times. What do you think of the QB room that, that you guys have here with, with Carson, right, and Will? I mean, what's kind of your objective going into the portal to try to get a, another quarterback? What do you think of the guys that you got there? Yeah, in an ideal world in the quarterback room, I would always love to have a senior, a junior, a sophomore, and freshman, right? In this day and age with the transfer portal, right, obviously it's, it's hard to, you know, live that way. Uh, but with Will Rogers and, and Parsons coming in, you know, in the mid-year, I really wanted to get some experience, right, kind of between uh, the gap there of the older guy with a lot of experience and a younger guy. Uh, so, you know, adding Mike Wright to the room uh, was something that I think was fantastic uh, for us. Uh, number one, right, he's, he's played in this league, right, um, and he's won games. He's got, you know, notches on his belt within this league. Um, and two, you know, it adds a little bit of different dynamic uh, to the quarterback room and his skill set. Sure. To the late hang on. What's the offense going to look like if them leads in with this seat? Uh, you know, uh, I would say this. Uh, you can expect, like I, I indicated earlier, there'll be a lot of work with uh, formations and, and ships and motions, uh, a little more, you know, window dressing uh, with things. For me, it's all about keeping it simple for the kids, right, but making defensive coordinators stay up late at night to work on you know, the different looks, the different adjustments, how I fit this right with a tight end now folding in. Uh, so, you know, to the layman's fan, right, uh, you know, I, I think you're just going to see how maybe more got uh, creative. With the roster that you guys have now, I'm sure there can always be you know, a little bit of changes in movement with, with what you want to do and such, but uh, what, what do you kind of think of it overall? Like, do you have a lot of, a lot of confidence in it heading into the season, and what excites you about it? Yeah, uh, you know, with the Russia that we do have, right, I think the fun part about this and, you know, with, with no tight ends on the roster yet, right, and now developing and, and building guys into a room, uh, the fun part for me is going to be the discovery phase of spring ball, right? And there might be some hidden, right, gems that you go, well, we don't have to stop playing in that position, but, you know, now he's going to move in there and all of a sudden, you know, he's become, oh, well, his skill set, you know, is higher than what we thought, or he can do these things. Uh, you know, so with the roster that we have right now, you know, I think, uh, you know, I, I'm just excited to identify, right, what our playmakers can do, what their strengths are, right, and find some of those new little niche uh, characteristics with them, you know, the guy's skill sense that live over roster. Miss the skill sets of me, your wide receiver, and then out of stuff, and skill sets got so fast. This, how much does that help you as an offensive coordinator to kind of get to the of the load? You know, the, uh, it, it helps tremendously, right? And I think on the things there, you know, we can get thought in is making, you know, trying to overtake things, right? Where at the end of the day, right, the key for us is you find the best 11 players and make sure they're on, right? Now, of those best 11 players, what do those guys do the best? And how do you create explosive play, right? You know, and you asked earlier about, you know, what everybody's going to expect. I am a believer, right? You start with running the football, right? And uh, you dictate the game, right, by a toughest level of being able to run the football. Your explosive passes, I come from, right, being able to run the football and getting guys to add an extra hat into the box. And then, you know, using your first of the grade mismatches, and that's where the shifts and the bullsh come in. Uh, so, you know, for our defensive coordinators, right, you try to add as many different personnel groups as possible, right, in order to play to the strengths of your guys, right, but also find out what the weakness is. Yes. Back here in Starbull, I mean, how's it feel for you to be back home and, and get a chance to, to coach for the home teams? Good. 
Um, it's what I wanted, what I started coaching for. So uh, to finally be back here feels really good. I'm excited, ready to get going. Walk me through the process of you coming back. I mean, what were those conversations like with Coach Arnett and uh, how quickly did he contact you and all that? Um, real easy, um, easy conversation. Uh, he got, he's easy to talk to. Um, he called me either the night he got named or the next day, um, but it was really soon. Um, and just, hey, are you, in, are you interested in coming home? I got every intention of bringing you back. Um, and we were able to get it done. So a little bit before the bowl game, or before Christmas actually, um, went through the whole bowl process and then uh, made it official. So what do you think, what do you think was kind of the determining factor for him? I mean, obviously he thought that you were going to be an important piece. I mean, what did he kind of pitch to you why he wanted you here? Um, obviously we had success on the field at Utah. But I think the biggest thing is he's he he's built this staff with Mississippi guys, guys with Mississippi ties, um, being from here, playing here, um, having relationships with a lot of high school coaches in the state. I think that was big um, as far as what he was trying to build the staff around. Yeah, he had mentioned last month that you know recruiting Mississippi was a big priority for him. I guess I'm sure you did a little bit at Utah, but I guess how much are you looking forward to recruiting the state, and how important do you think it is to build the program with the foundation of Mississippi guys being in? Very important. Um, very important. The the best teams we've had here have been teams that have been dominated by guys from this state or the footprint. Um, but I'm super excited, happy to get back out here again. There's a lot of relationships and people that I know in this state that I haven't been able to talk to in a while. So just to be able to get back out on the road and go see some of these guys um, and recruit some, some real talent um, and try to keep that talent at home in Maroon and White. A lot of these receivers were already in place whenever you got here, but Got Freddie Roberson that was just announced earlier. I mean, what's your thoughts on this group so far that you've inherited and the ones that you brought in to? Um, hadn't been able, I mean, obviously you watch film. Um, hadn't been able to see him move a lot in person. We had a team run yesterday and we were able to see some guys move around. Um, there's some athletes, right? We got some guys that can do some, some really good things. We just got to get them in the right spots, right? Find our best group of guys who can help us win find ways to get them the ball um, in positions where they can be successful. I was asking Tony you know, if he used it. Obviously, he's been in this a long time, but I asked him if you were the first guy he had, he had coached under that actually coached beside him now. How neat is that dynamic? Uh, really weird. Uh, it's good, though. Um, so there's Coach Hughes, who's safeties, Coach Knox, who's running backs, and Coach Turner, was D-line. So. Um, the first day Turner was here, he walked in the locker room. He's like, hey, last time I was here, you in the other locker room. <laughs> so um, it's good, man. Those are good guys who helped me a lot, uh, not being a part of their position, but um, just being able to learn from them. So um, it was really good for me. I think you recruited Freddie some at Utah, and you kind of had that previous relationship. I mean, what do you like about him, and what does he bring to this team next year? Um, I think he is a bigger guy who has some, some uh, slot-like twitch. Um, I think he can do some really good things with the ball in his hands. Um, obviously gives us some depth outside. I think he's going to play outside for us. Um, and then you look at him playing at Eastern Washington, his best games were against Power 5 teams, the Oregons, the Floridas. Um, he turned the film on and he looks like he belongs. And uh, I think he's a guy who's going to come in and give us some uh, immediate help um, on the outside. When he took the job, you had already called for early signing day. So you got a bunch of receivers that signed, and mm -hmm. you didn't recruit. What were those conversations like when you first came on board to talk to those guys to get to them? Um, I mean, really simple. Um, again, didn't recruit you here, but again, being the receiver coach here, uh, nothing will change as far as our plan for you. Um, we still have a lot of guys in place, and obviously you were recruited here for a reason, um, and we're going to do everything we can to put you in position where you can find some success. Um, I, I knew Nakai Poole. I recruited him a little bit. Um, so that conversation was easy. But just – and uh, Justin Brown as well. Um, so just getting to know um, everybody else, It's I mean, it's been good. You were hired before Coach Barbe was hired, but I know you had a previous relationship with him and you kind of knew knew him pretty well. Uh, what's your thoughts on him and this offense um, um, that he's brought? Yeah, I love it. Um, and, again, the, the, the constant message he said to me is, we have to find guys who can score at any given time and put the ball in their hands, right? And as a receiver, that's what you want to hear, right? Somebody who's going to find a way to put us um, in position to do what we do well, right? Um, he likes to push the ball downfield, which I love. Um, and he moves guys around. He may be a slight receiver. We may line you up outside, run a quick screen. 
line you up in some wildcat stuff. Um, but he is very adamant about getting those guys the ball in space and letting them, um, letting them make us look like smart coaches. You got a lot of different bodies in your receiver. You got some really fast guys like Xavier too. You got some big bodies. I guess how important is it to have you know guys that can give you different things? Oh yeah, too? you need it, right? You need a complete receiver room. Um, you need your slot guys who are twitching, um, make people miss. Um, and then you have to have those big guys who can win in the Bowser one on one, right? That are really good against press, big physical guys. Um, that when they get challenged at the line of scrimmage, they can win. You got your speed guys who can take the top off. Um, and then you got a lot of guys who play some quarterback, right? Uh, and we're running a lot of option and choice routes, and you have to see the field like the quarterback sees it. You got to see the same thing on defense. So um, I, I'm loving it, right? We got a lot of guys who can do some good bats. Obviously, um, Tulu, you know, entered the portal. You got him back. How important is he for this offense? He's huge. Here? Man. He is huge. He's one of those guys, right? You talk about – Hey, identify the guys who you can put the ball in their hands. He's the guy who immediately comes to mind. Um, he's been successful at this level, um, not only in special teams, um, but on offense. And again, as an offensive staff, we've talked about, we need to put the ball in his hands more, right? Find little ways to get him the ball, um, whether it's a fly sweep, whether it's wildcat, whether it's choice route, whether it's a ball downfield. He's gonna touch the ball a lot more, um, and I'm excited to coach it. Just how great is it to be home? Um, Everything I've hoped for. I, mean, I started <laughs> coaching for this job, so um, I couldn't be happier, man. My family's happy. My wife and son are fired up to be back. Um, I guess it'll be my son's first time here. Yeah. Um, but no, everybody's excited. Family's here. Her family's in Atlanta, so it just made much more sense. On um, obviously having the connection here speaks for itself, but um, getting her back here was huge and awesome. Yeah. And of course, I mean, you just uh, in addition to being home, I mean. It's not like you're just here because you came here. I mean, you, you worked your tail off the last few years to get to this point. Just what's the last few years meant to you as you progressed in your career? Um, everything, right? Uh, just some of the coaches you meet along the way, some of the programs you're in. Um, I can't say enough good things about Utah. Yeah. Um, Coach Whittingham has built an amazing program, a winning culture. Um, again, I was there three years, and I competed for three championships, right? Winning two. Um and that's what you want to bring here, right? You want to uh, compete for conference championships. Um, and again, just the relationships you build, the knowledge you gain, people you meet, um, it was huge for me. Yeah, what's, what's maybe something that, the, you know, you really learned about yourself uh, at Mad Utah or, you know, all, all your, your couple stops that you've had in between? Um, that's a great question. Uh, I have way, way more patience. <laughs> um, and again, just the game itself, just learning so much about the game, um, taking different things from different people, right? Being a graduate assistant at Buffalo, then GA and at Utah, coaching in Austin Peay. Every stop you go, you meet people who do things different, and you take something from each program that you like until you build your own, yeah. right? And I've been able to take a lot from some really good coaches. Uh, and again, still learning. You look at the staff we got here, and. I'm going to be taking a lot more. <laughs> so um, really excited. Um, and, again, just learning more about the game every step of the way. Did you still kind of peek at those Mississippi State scores over the last decade? Every chance I got, yeah. <laughs> um, whether we were uh, in the hotel waiting for our game or whatever, just trying to get, a uh, again, Pac-12 after dark, right? Those are some late games. So <laughs> you get a chance to watch a little bit and keep up with them. Um, and so every chance I got, I did. Last night for me, you didn't make it even more sweet to – have to, to come back home after being away for a decade. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it gives you the opportunity and the chance to miss it. Yeah. Right? And, again, like I said, Utah is great. I, I mean, I love the city, love the uh, program, but there's nothing like home, right? And it was it was time to get back. You the man. Appreciate you, Chad. Thank we'll you. talk to you. Thank you. Absolutely. I'm sure you've been asked this already, but what is it, uh, how excited are you to work with some of the returning wide receivers that can have? I'm um, very excited. Um there's a lot of ability in that road, right? Um, some talented guys that, again, I just want to continue to help grow. I've been doing some really good things. Um, and again, not going to change a lot of what they do, just change how they do it. Um, but I'm super excited, ready to get to work with. I guess on a, on a day like today or, you know, anytime you guys are, are out recruiting and, and signing players, I guess how, how much does it help to, you know, have a staff like this with, with so many ties to Mississippi? Does, 
you know, Zach had said in December signing day that, you know, recruiting the state was, was top priority for this, for this team. It's huge. Um, again, you talk about the relationships throughout the state on, I mean, not just people with Mississippi ties, but guys from Mississippi who really, again, it's, it's very easy to fly into these big cities and hit the major high schools, but doing the driving at five in the morning to get to some of these schools that a lot of, a lot of uh, programs aren't going to, right? And finding one or two kids that may have sl uh, slipped through the cracks, right? Um, that's what you love about recruiting here. And again, there's talent everywhere. Every school you go to, there's gonna be somebody that catches your eye, that can do something. Um, they, they may not all be for us, right? But there's talent everywhere you go. So um, it's huge for us, man. Just those relationships, being able to walk in schools and having an instant connection with somebody in the building, um, that makes a difference. We stand on the flip side there, but I mean, you guys have you know, a ton of people on the staff that you know come from various coaching stops. You guys and yourself being the Pac-12 country, I guess. How, how much does that add to that the potential to maybe also grab some players from other states as well? Yeah, um, again, big for us, uh, just because again we've recruited different regions, being all over again West Coast, um, just being all over. Those are relationships and connections you make, and um, it, it 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 all helps throughout recruiting. Chad, you've been away a while, so. How strong for your contacts to Mississippi relative to just the time outside is they still pretty strong? Um, I would like to think so. Uh, I hope so. Um, again, relationships are things that just don't fade, right? It's not just a hey, hello. It's a, like those are genuine relationships. Some of the guys I played with are head coaches in the state. Um, and again, even being out in Utah, I was still recruiting Mississippi. Now, we're not going to get a lot. There's a lot of stops between here and Utah. So we're not going to get a lot of guys, but I've stayed in contact with a lot of coaches. Um, and so I'd like to think there, there's still some uh, there's still some strength there. Well, in, in kind of building those contacts, strengthening those contacts, whatnot, how important is it that you played at Mississippi State? Did you walk into Mississippi school and, and you have that right away? I'm sure you get questioned about that. Yeah, um, obviously it's huge playing at the, at the university, right? You're recruiting guys to a university that not only you played at, but that you care about. But more specifically, growing up in Mississippi, um, I think that's bigger just because um, I know what it's like walking through those high schools and what it takes to make it out of here um, and giving those guys everything that I can to help them do that. Um, I think that speaks more so than just playing at the university. What was that kind of like for you the, the first time, you know, Zach Garnett reached out to you and kind of expressed uh, the opportunity to co-coach him as I know you've been uh, you've been rumored by a lot of people in this room in the past about coming here. Yeah, uh, no, it was huge, man. A um, couple of days before Christmas, uh, sitting at home, getting ready for doing bowl prep, um, getting ready for the Rose Bowl, and he just reached out. And it was either the night he got named the head coach or the next night, I can't remember, but just reached out, asked if I was interested in coming back, and – on that he had every intention on bringing me home so we were able to work everything out and um, I'm fired up man I'm happy it worked out the way it did. What did it mean I guess not only the the fact they reached out to you but the fact that you know almost immediately as soon as you had the opportunity you were the first guy or one of the first guys to come to mind? Yeah um, that was huge and again um, obviously having some success on the field in Utah plays a part in it but I think man just the relationships and being able to recruit this state is huge. Um, that's what he's he, he's built the staff around. That's what he wants to do, and I don't think you can go wrong with. It. Did you had did you met him in the past or, or had any relationship with him? Um, so I was talking with Coach Leach two years ago about potentially taking the running backs job. Mm -hmm. Um, wasn't what I was looking for at the time, and again, I get it. It's home, but I was in a really good situation. Uh, so I knew him through that, but we hadn't had many conversations. Um, but we had spoken before. What did you cut up? Man, apologies, this was Glasses. She had a by the way, John Sock up with uh, WCBI and nice to meet you. You as well. But um so Zach Garnett, I mean, you could tell that you were a little familiar with him, but you know, you know, a young guy coming out, did you have any concern of black or white head coaching experience in, in this league? And and what did you kinda of think about that little situation coming into it? Uh no, um, not at all. You see the way he runs the defense, you see how he carries himself, the things that he's done for the program, no concern at all young energetic guy which matches who I am right a lot of energy um a lot of excitement around the program and then you get to talk to him and uh bald head Brad and you um, <laughs> and you get to know that they're I mean the people they're going to surround this program with right um everybody in this program 
for the most part, has had some success in, in this league. And again, there's no doubt in my mind that we have a really good staff and we're going to do some good things. You just kind of touched on it there, the excitement level, and that's even what Barbe was saying too, but how much he's had like that. I mean, what else excites you about kind of working with uh, with Zach Arnett? Because, you know, you're in a good spot to you yeah. know, come here. You must have a ton of belief. Absolutely, right? And again, like I just mentioned, right, the success that the defense had, the way that they played, the way that they care about each other, right? That's what you want in a football team. You want guys that want to play for the guy next to you, right? Um, and again, you talk about the excitement, the energy. That's who I am, right? I'm the guy that's going to run around the practice field with my guys. Um, a lot of energy, a lot of excitement. Um, and he's brought that to the program, right? So I wanted to be a part of it. Not to mention it's home, you know? Um, it's so much, and again, can't say enough good things about Utah, but it's different recruiting a place that you really, really care about um, and not just looking for the next step. I, I want to be here, right? So um, that adds more excitement to it. Chance Mississippi mean to you? It's everything, right? I'm from here, born and raised here. Um, the struggles, uh, the success, everything um, that you think about. And again, being out on the West Coast, just being out East at Buffalo, you get to hear and see how people view the state. Um, and for me, that's everything, man. I mean, it made me who I am. It's gotten me to where I am. Um, and I love being from here. I love this state. I love everything about it. So. Um, I'm just excited, fired up, man. A lot is made about how well State has been recruiting Mississippi. How important is that? I mean, you've been at other other Power Fives and SEC. How important is it to build a recruited class for inside the state? Is that important? You know, I think it's huge. I think, uh, you know, I think you can win a, a, a championship in the state of Mississippi if you can if, if recruit players from the state and look at rosters that are that are at schools in the neighboring states, you know, there's there's always guys from Mississippi in it, and the, you know the brand of football and and, and those things uh, that the state provides is is there's no doubt it'll, it'll be a huge importance for us, and and uh, that's where to start. We got a good foundation, a good home base, and you know, and then and then you know being close to some other good football areas helps also, but it, it has to start in your home state. Is what was kind of the the timing of how everything worked, and when did you kind of first hear from from Zach and, and his interest of, of bringing into staff? And I guess how excited were you about you know that opportunity to go back to Mississippi? Yeah, you know, just through the process, exactly when it was, I can't remember. I had a call reached out if I'd be interested, and and um, and then kind of went from there. But but to come back, you know, being from the state of Mississippi, always having a lot of pride in being from Mississippi, and 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 to to finally come back, you know, it's been a long time since I've been here, and. Uh, you know, the state's important to me. The people are important to me, and and uh, you know, it's it's special. And um, so that that opportunity was great. Family still in the area. So, uh, but to be part of, you know, that's kind of a selfish way of looking at it, a personal way. But but it's big for me. And um, but to be part of again a a great institution, and, and and to be in a town that you that you know a lot of people, and and an area that you know a lot of people is really special. So very blessed to be here. So you've been away for a while. So are your contacts still strong? I mean, do people uh, yeah. people know the friend family when you? Yeah, we're all a little older. People, have, you know, people have all gained a little weight and a little more gray hair. But but yes, yeah, still still know a lot of people. I've recruited Mississippi and, and other stops, and and uh, you know, and I've I've kind of for most of my career been kind of right on the border states. You know, I spent us uh, these you know a lot of time in the state of Alabama, a lot of time in Tennessee. Um, you know, so I was still part of the border states and those type of things. They were coming here and, and recruit and, yes. um, yes. you know, in fact, dad still coaches and, um, you know, so I still know a lot of people in the area. I guess well, what's it like when, you know, the Valley League yourself or, or Chad or some others on the staff, you know, that when you go into a recruit's house, you will understand the state. I guess how much do you, do you think that helps this, the staff having those ties? Yeah, I think so. I think, you know, any time that you have some familiarity with people and where people are from helps. And, you know, at the end of the day, it's not just it, – it's a, the thing that you – when you sign players and players come to play there, it's your, it's your institution. It's, it's what your, your institution offers. It's what – where your institution that offers. And there's everybody in your program doing the recruiting. I mean, it's not just one person. Someone gets tagged with it. A position coach gets tagged with it, and they are important. But, you know, really when, when the best jobs that I've been a part of I've done in recruiting are, are when everyone's involved and, and those type things. So 
Uh, you know, it comes through hard work. It comes through details of just being, you know, being good people, I guess. So it does help, but at the, at the end of the day, you know, the things they've done on the staff, you know, in recruiting the state, um, it's because they're good people, because they worked hard at it, and because Star from Mississippi State have a lot to offer. And uh, um, just glad to be a part of it, to be able to help out where I can. When you guys sit down and come up with a recruiting plan, obviously Mississippi's a focus. Where does where does out of state? Where do the other pockets come in? Where does the portal come in? Yeah, does all that fit together? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I speak it again. You want to have an emphasis on in state, and then you want to you want to you want to have the ability in our footprint and uh, and the radius of what what's being out. You know, the the four hour whatever you want call it radius from from Star for us. And there's a lot of good football play there. And uh, so you want to go get the best players that you can find in those areas. And, and uh, you know, and then the portal part, I mean, it, it's part of what college football is. And it's something that, that we're continuing to adapt to. And I think everybody in the country was saying the same thing. You're going to have to adapt to it, learn how to how to maneuver through that. And, and that'll be a part of it also. No, there's been a, a lot of hyper value value in the past, like Chris Jones, Billy Gay, and that, though. You know, made their way through the NFL, but yeah. there's been some offensive linemen from say the past few years that have kind of you know yeah. been through the ranks as well. I guess uh, how easy is that to to fish to some guys of you know the NFL opportunities that have come with with players that have been you know kind of through the Mississippi State. Yeah, I think it. You know, I think you know one of the things that we have the advantage here. I think a prospect can reach all his goals here at Mississippi State, and 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 that's academically, that's you know athletically, uh, you know. You know anything that those guys have dreamed about, they can accomplish here, and and I really believe that that kind of gives you a little bit to see that hey here, here's a guy from from Laurel, Mississippi that that's that's a what eighth night pick overall came to Mississippi State, and everything that he dreamed about doing, he was able to accomplish. So anytime you're able to have proof of it, I think that that validates it. But man, you can accomplish anything you want right here. So when you there's a look at the, yep, the recruiting pictures, and there's this this guy that's highly recruited in the Midwest or the West Coast, and everybody's offering that sort of thing. Is is that the kind of guy y'all are interested in? Well, I think you always want to recruit the best players that you can get, and uh, I think you do have to understand. You know, I think fit is is a huge part. I think you know some one of the the main things in the recruiting process, and that gets missed out a lot of times is is. You know, it's it's not all just evaluating to take. Sometimes it's evaluating and deciding not to take or whatever it may be. And 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 I think that's important. You know, we're gonna recruit the best players that we can recruit that are great fits for our program, that wanna play the football they wanna play and and you know, whether they're highly recruited or not, they fit in that that mindset we'll recruit them. Is, is the talent just better in Mississippi now or has it always been this good if people were missing? I think it's always been this good. I think uh you know, like like anything else, I think uh, you know. Uh, what? I, I I do think it. I think it's harder to for a player to to get hit, just like you said nowadays, because you know, probably because of the phones and internets and those type things are so much different. You know, I remember 25 years ago, or when I first started recruiting. You know, my first job, you had to pull off the side of the road, get on a payphone, and try to get a hold of someone. So I mean, I think you can you can reach more people. Now, well, uh, staffs are bigger. Uh, the, it's, it's so much easier access to get film and evaluate a guy than it used to be. So that's, that's probably had a bit the, the talent's always been in this state and, um, you know, and, and no different than, it, than it's always been. And that's, that's going to be the challenge. Wherever you're in a state that has a lot of talent, you're going to have to, you're going to have to beat off the, the other people that are trying to come in and get your players, right? So you got to, that, that, that will be the challenge, but that'll be, that'll, that'll be what we have to do. You and Coach Bumpus are from Mississippi. Coach Hughes knows every high school coach at this state. Uh, coach Charter has been around. Was this staff, when you talk to Coach Arnett, was it put together with that emphasis, like we want to be able to recruit Mississippi and we need guys like you here? There, there's no question. I think Coach Arnett has, has made that a priority of how important having players that are Mississippi guys and, and, and tough people. And, you know, Mississippi players have a tendency to be known as tough and physical guys and, and that we wanted to do that. And, and – um, so, again, like I said earlier, you know, before you came out, I, I think so much is made of, you know, recruiting. It doesn't necessarily that you have to be. It's, it's about to doing the dil- you know, due diligence and, and working and being good people. And, man, we got everything we, we, we need to offer right here at, at Star from Mississippi State. And, and by making that an influence, I think you'll see a lot of success with it.
So you're the offensive line coach. Coach Schmidt is the run game coordinator, tackles, and tight end coach. Sort of talk me through how that relationship was going to work. Yeah, Coach and I, were, we, we coached it. Did we know each other? Great. No, we've met each other before. But Coach is a guy that I've had a lot of respect for and have the opportunity to come in and work with him. And um, we're two O-line guys, and, and uh, we both believe in the same things. Uh, you know, we're two guys that can work together, and we'll be we'll be heavily involved together with it. And, uh, you know, I think it's a great opportunity. I mean, like, you think about recruiting, you, it's about developing. If I'm a young player and I want to get developed, you know, um, you know, why would I go somewhere where there's two guys constantly coaching me every day? And, you know, when you think about it, you know, there's 11 guys on the football field every snap. At least five of them are going to be offensive linemen. One tight end, that's six out of 11. So the fact that, that we'll have two coaches that are working with both guys, you know, I think is is, is really, really valuable. And uh, so. What's the biggest challenge for you this spring when you've got an offensive line that you've got to pass block 700 times a year now? you got to, you got to get them more to uh, be more of a one block. Well, no, no different. I mean, I think the big, you know, so much with the offensive line is repetition and, and the verbiage and, hearing the same thing, and, and I think that'll be one of our biggest challenges. Whether we left from a from the air raid or from whatever, the, anytime you're new, that, that is the biggest challenge. And I think you, you, you can you can magnify it a little bit, but it will be a different style. Um, but, um, you know, blocking still blocky. And uh, um, so the same challenges, no matter any time you go new, will, will, will be theirs. Um, so... Yeah, it is. We're 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 ready to get to been on the road recruiting, ready to kind of come in and lay the foundation. Is probably more anything is the verbal part of it, you know, and being able to communicate and, and those type things. Once they get that, then then the rest will be going learning the scheme, learning the. So that's going to be probably the biggest challenge. I want to uh, talk a little more personally. It's so a uh, buffer club. So one thing that I was told years ago was that you and Zach Arnett are almost like brothers. Me and Zach Arnett? Yes. Yeah, so that well I guess that you guys had a healthy respect for each other. Oh, okay. I got yeah, I, I there's no question about it. I mean, uh, you know, when he and being able to compete against Coach Arnett and playing against his teams, I mean, um I mean just the issues they present on defense are just a nightmare and, and then the way with the way that which they play, the physical part of it and the toughness part of it is something from afar that I really, really admired and thought a lot of. So, um, you know, that's one of the things excited, you know, there's a big deal about being made of coming home, which is important and all that, but you also know you're going to be playing, I was playing or coaching for a guy that, that's going to run his program the right way. It's going to be about physical toughness and, and, and doing things right. And, and uh, that's exciting. You mentioned uh, you've been on the other end of this thing against yeah. Zach, that defense. What kind of challenges? What's it like to prepare for a Zach Arnett Mississippi State beat? Well, I mean, they make you change so many things. I think that's one of the things that's so good about it. And, you know, they, they, they're so multiple in what they do. And they're, they're simple but multiple. And uh, so as an offensive line, you just go through the history trying to play them. There, there's, there's a lot of – they're not conventional. So a lot of your things that are conventional week to week kind of get thrown out the window and then they do it with a, a high tempo and a lot of movement and just presents a lot of problems and you know now that you've got me thinking about it I don't know how good that's going to be in the spring going against it every day but but uh you know just the the main thing is that that I think coaching them have done is that they, they've been able to create confusion but don't forget it's about the effort that which is defense is play with and the toughness is what they play with what makes it makes them good. So, and, and, and I sense being able to do that throughout the whole program. Now, you mentioned coming home, obviously, yes. and then there were a lot of Bulldog fans for years that wanted you to be hired here at Mississippi State because you are a Mississippi guy. How important are those Mississippi roots to you, especially on a recruiting trip? Yeah, it's huge. And, and you know, uh, you know, I've always had pride in being from the state of Mississippi and, and you know, anybody that's ever worked with me and, and, and you've been have, have known me know how much pride I have being from, from Mississippi. And uh, so to be able to come back, Mississippi people are special to me. They've all, every, every, where I've been through my career, whenever there's a Mississippi kid on that team, that's been a special relationship because of where we're from. And to be a part of it is, 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 is exciting and, and a blessing. And, and you can reach every one of your goals here uh, in Starboy at Mississippi State. Uh, anything that you want to do, you can do right here. So to be a part of that, I'm excited. 
And you mentioned Starville. I understand your mom lives in Starville. Mom lives a mile from Canto, sir. Sure. How special is that? Oh, that's special. So I'm just going to stay at home right now a little bit with her while we're in the transition of the move. And she's making me breakfast every morning, make it every morning, no matter what time we get up. We got up in the morning at 5 o'clock morning. She had me grapes and bananas and all that. So, Mom, you don't have to do this, so, but it's special. Yeah. And so. Speaking of being special, putting on that maroon and white, yeah. it means a lot. A lot of people, a lot of people wanted you to wear it when you were coming out of high school there to show with Central. But to finally be here at Mississippi State, I mean, yeah. be a part of this fall, but it means so much. So many people. How does that mean to you? Oh, it means a lot. And you know, I've got a lot of family that went to state, and uh, a lot of people that I've been around uh, that are close to me went to state, and uh, to be a part of it. You know, you kind of get in this profession and it becomes a job, and 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 you know, there's very few places that. It wouldn't be just a job for me here. There's one of them, you know, it's, you know, the importance. It's important to a lot of people that aren't just fans that you meet. You've known them since you were this tall. So that, that, that's a great honor. When did you get settled? I mean, probably not settled yet, yeah. but when did you get yeah, started? Been here about a week and a half now. So uh, got in last Saturday, was out on the road last week, and then uh, just getting my feet feet wet, just meeting the players. First time I met the players was on Tuesday morning. So still getting my feet wet with all that. Um, but fired up to be here, man, down here in the south. And I've been on the road a little bit down here. And football is definitely king, and that's one of the reasons I came here. Kind of takes it through the process of Coach Arnett adding you to the staff and, and y'all's relationship. Yeah, we, we, had been, we had been in talks. Obviously, our relationship goes way back to our time at uh, San Diego State, and we've been, we've been close. We've been loyal to each other and all that. And I think um, a lot of that revolves around why we click on the field and our person personalities match and – and I think that's not only what brought our friendship close together back there in San Diego, but I think that's what gave him the confidence that I can come in here and do the job that, that he needs to be done. You're coaching tight ends and um, offensive tackles? Yes, sir. And uh, I, I was talking to, to one of the, your transfers announced today, Riley Goody, uh, and he made mention when he's, his visit this past weekend that he was the first tight end host of the year to probably about four and a half. Yeah, no doubt. Talk about that dynamic and, and bringing that position back into yeah, college. Yeah, and I, I think that's 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 a huge huge challenge this offseason and and going through our roster and see what guys can fit in there. We're still in the works with with building that room. Um, it will be a challenge going into year one here. I think Riley's going to add going to add a lot of lot of depth to us and and a lot of experience in this league that uh, we're really going to be able be able to rely on him and the other guys that were that were starting to transition. Um, and we just had brief talks with them this week, and we're starting to transition a couple guys on the roster. And uh, hopefully by when we come back and pound on Monday, we'll have a little better idea on how that how that group's going to look heading into spring here. Who are some of those guys that, that may make? They got Clayton Harmon, and then uh, and then the young freshman Ellis. Um, he 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 he's been talked to as well. So I think that group's still still forming as as we speak. We'll have a better idea by then next week when we start when we start. Uh, getting a little more detail in everything we're doing offensively. Ellis is an early graduate. you got some other offensive tackles. you got a very experienced group back. I think Hugh Sharp is only offensive line, but not back. Yep. You know, what's it like for you? Obviously, there's a transition everywhere, but but how beneficial is it for you to come in and have a guys like Nick Jones, Cam Jones, Percy Lewis, and all of those? No, no doubt. It, and and there's gonna, it's going to be a competitive spring. That's that's what's great about it. And they're, they're going to feel from both me and Coach Friend, they're going to feel the – probably a little different coach coaching philosophy and stuff like that. And most of that philosophy is going to change because of what we're asking them to do. And um, it's going to be, it's going to be wide open competition there. And we, and we, and we got a couple options. So when you got options as good as coaches, that, that, that's always good. And the other thing is if we do want to play big, we're going to be able, we're going to be able to do some stuff in personnel groups and stuff where maybe you have more than two tackles out there. Obviously, a uh, a sad situation and, and a new situation with Coach Leak passing away and Coach Arnett taking over. Um, you know, there, there's some familiarity here with some coaches, but also some newness. What's what's kind of your thoughts coming into this program? You've known Coach Arnett for a while, but uh, just to be part of it of his first staff and and, and try to continue the, the legacy that Coach Leak. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think that's uh, what what Coach Arnett has done and giving me this opportunity now. I know we're close and all that, but he wouldn't have hired me if I was not a qualified coach. I've uh, developed players that he, he knows really well, and he's seen them come in from the recruiting process, the way I've developed them, and sent them on to the next level. Um, he, he, has, he has seen that firsthand. He has hired me to come in and do a job. I, I, I 
respect all the guys that were here and what Coach Leach has meant because being out on the West Coast at Washington State, we would run into him all the time and, and the legacy he has left here and the winning tradition is something that we look, we look to carry on here at Mississippi State. Now, Tony, I know that uh, people describe you as football coach. You've done a little bit of everything. And so what about this new challenge of coaching running back? Well, uh, it's definitely a, a challenge, and uh, but an opportunity, for, you know, for me to continue to learn and grow and uh, help develop uh, young men and also uh, have a chance to uh, enjoy uh, the aspect of uh, a new coaching staff and working with Coach Marbe. And what, what advantages do you feel like you have with a veteran group that you have returned? Well, this, it gives you a tremendous edge because, you know, there's a, there's new learning, and most of the learning is terminology. But when it comes to uh, the actual fundamentals of playing the position, um, we uh, have a veteran group, and that makes it a lot easier to adjust. Now, you're a guy, obviously, it's very precious to Mississippi State people, and as soon as there was all this talk about changeover, the fans were very much in support of you, obviously, for staying on the staff. What does that mean to you? Well, it means a lot. It really does. Uh, I've, had a treme- I've had a tremendous uh uh, experience here at Mississippi State through the years, and uh, th- it's been uh, uh, very, very uh, exciting and very good for me and my family. And uh, it's just a chance for me to grow and develop as a coach, and to uh, be able to work at a place like Mississippi State really means a lot to me. I guess three head coaches for you now, is that correct? Let's see. Uh, would that be three or four? Four. Yeah, four. Yeah. <laughs> so you kind of become a mainstay here. I mean, you know, it's like. You and the cleaning staff always get to kind of hang out. <laughs> you know, you mentioned Mississippi State being a special place. What what you like to kind of be home, I guess you would say? Well, it's, it's uh, uh, you know, every place has its challenges and uh, and, and its form of uh, things that you run into. No, no, no place is a paradise, but the people here at Mississippi State love football. They love the Bulldogs. Uh, they love the SEC and um, they, they're given tremendous support through the years, and I've just enjoyed the ride. You're a guy, too, that's coached tight ends. You've coached safeties, a little bit of everything, you know. You mentioned the learning process of it. I mean, is that kind of proof positive that even late in your career you can embrace a new challenge and learn some things about football? Well, I, I, I give uh, Coach Arnett um, a lot of respect for giving me the opportunity, one, you know, to stay with his new staff, and two, to have enough faith and confidence in me to be able to uh, move over to the offensive side of the ball and, and to be able to coach one of the most precious positions on the team. Because, you know, one of the things one of the things that we are uh, wanting to do moving forward that he wants to do as a head coach is be able to run the football more than they have in the past. And uh, so for me to be asked to go over and to, uh, to carry out that assignment for him means a lot. Coach also made a commitment about recruiting Mississippi. I know that's right in your in your breadbasket right there. I mean, you know, when thinking about kind of getting back to the roots of what this program is kind of built on as a foundation, and what does that mean for a guy like you? Because I know Bullock fans, there's nobody else they want to live in room more than Tony Hughes. So have that opportunity to really kind of focus on Mississippi recruiting, what does that mean? Well, it means a lot, and, and Coach Arnett has said that he wants to uh, recruit the state of Mississippi, the footprint, you know, the, 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 the areas uh, – within a three or four hour radius of Starkville, which in Mississippi State's success, that's where we've gotten the majority of our players and that those guys have made a difference. And, you know, they feel the passion and the love and the excitement and Mississippi kids from small towns and backwoods uh, uh, come here and they have a lot of success. And uh, that's what makes it exciting. So if we can continue to find those guys and to work hard at it, uh, we could continue to have a good football program here. How much has it helped to have four players, four Bulldogs, that three from Mississippi High Schools and one from Mississippi Junior College to come to Mississippi State and now be playing for the ultimate prize? Well, that is that is uh, tremendous. I don't think no other team in the country uh, can say that they have four guys that, uh, you know, match the uh, intensity level of those guys, you know, and, and the way that they performed uh, this se- not just in the playoffs, but this whole season has been really exciting to watch those guys play. Dark Phil, how does it feel to be part of this team in this app? It's, it's great. It's great to be back. Uh, I'm so thrilled and excited, looking forward for this opportunity. What was your time at, at Buffalo like, and what's it like, you know, having the chance? To- it was fun. You know, uh, 
Coach Mo, uh, Coach Maurice Linguist, that we called him Coach Mo. He was uh, he was here with us for a year, and uh, so he called me and asked me to come up there with him, and I went and uh, stayed for basically a year. You know, and it was fun. We had a great hour, they had a great program. Went to the bowl game, won the bowl game. So, and then uh, Coach Arnett asked me to come here, so uh, I'm back home. Yeah. What was your uh, first stint like here? What was your experience like for the time that you spent in Starkville? For a while, obviously. Say it again. What was your experience like for the years you spent in Starkville previously? Oh, it was wonderful. It was a great experience. You know, again, we spent 10 years here, and, and the game, the number of games we won and bowls we went to, it was a great experience. You know, so I'm happy to be back and happy to continue to build on that. What do you think of the team that Coach Arnett has put together, you know, the signing class and the roster that's returning for next year? Well, it's a great class, and I'm excited to get these guys in here. And uh, we got some in here right now that came in early. So uh, looking forward to working with these guys and uh, getting to know them, building relationships, and watching this team grow. What do you plan to, you know, bring to your role? Uh, my role is, again, as a senior analyst, all right? So I'll be helping with the offense and analyzing the defense side of it, you know, and just uh, working with Coach Barbe and the, and the running backs also. I know it's, uh, I guess it's February now, but how excited are you to get to September and get this season? Uh I'm excited to get get through the spring right now. <laughs> I'm not going to worry about August and September right now. I'm focused on the spring and, uh, again, just getting to know our team and, and, and seeing them, you know, evolve into the new offense and, and how we handle them. Yeah, when you pick up a new team, I mean, what are you looking for in spring ball when you first kind of get to work with these guys? The work ethic, you know, just watching those guys, you know, sponge up all the information they can and go out and execute it at a high level and work hard doing this. When you uh, have a good defense yourself, like Mississippi State has had in the last couple of years, how important is that to, you know, kind of preparing your offense for what it's going to see? Well, that's important because defense wins games. So it's all about playing defense, you know. And so State has been always known for their defense. And so it, it's great to come back and, and have a team again that's that's defensive-minded, you know, and then we just got to get the offense going and, and be able to put some points on the board. Were you surprised at all when Coach Arnett reached out to you about coming back here? Of course I was. <laughs> I was surprised and excited. Yeah. Yes.